Hi, everyone. Welcome to Brothers, Sisters, Strangers video podcast. I'm Ali John Chaudhry, and today we have a very, very special episode. Uh, I, uh, I have, uh, I've been reading uh, Fern's book, and it's been such a great book, and I've been wanting to do this show for a long time. We've been wanting to do this for a very, very long time, both of us, and finally we get to sit down and talk about this. Finally, we get to do this. So, I'm really, really happy that we can, of course, pursue and open up on what this book is all about, because I'm certain that our viewers have been wondering, what is this book exactly? You know, what what's in it and what's it about and such, you know, and and we're really going to get into it today in that way. So that way we can give a bird's eye view in terms of what people can expect in this book. So what I want to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about Fern here, because um, I mean, you have a very extensive background, Fern, and I just want to say that basically, um, you know, you you have been a journalist, you've been a reporter, you've been a teacher uh, in various colleges that have uh, forged your work, uh, your future work very well to become, of course, an author, a speaker, an educator, of course. And I mean, your publications have been featured in such places as Forbes, the Chicago Tribune, uh, Washington Post, Fortune, and the Wall Street Journal, just to name a few. And uh, you're the author of, of uh, the memoir Motherland, a finalist for the National Jewish uh, Book Award and Barnes and Noble Discover Great New Writers title. And you're, you're also the author of uh, Is It Night or Day or, uh, and uh, I'm sorry, uh, Like Finding My Twin, both of which are used in uh, middle school classrooms, of course. And uh, you've been named the Illinois Author of the Year and your books have been featured on the Oprah Winfrey Show. Um, so now <laughs> you've written another important book that, uh, of course, we'll get into, which is the title is Brothers, Sisters, Strangers, Sibling Estrangement and the Road to Reconciliation. Welcome, Fern. I'm really glad to have you here on the show. This show is going to be all about you and the book. So, <laughs> Well, thank you. I'm not quite so comfortable talking just about me, but I'm going to give it a go. Um, it's really wonderful to be here. And... The topic I think is extremely important and shrouded in secrecy. And I'm glad that we're able to do this because it's it's interesting that you say that because the way I've read the book in that way, you've really illustrated and shed some light on the fact that it's a hidden epidemic. Sibling estrangement is a hidden epidemic and it's 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 uh, the book is in a, written in a clear and thoughtful voice. Uh, it discloses your heart-wrenching feelings and memories that uh, are corroborated by other voices that went through the same type of collective experience that we've all been through. And I have to say, the book is brutally honest and candid. And, you know, I really think that this type of book has been a trailblazer. And the, the reason why I say this is because you, it tries to understand the societal, the, the cultural, and the economical reasons uh, behind social, be, behind sibling estrangement in that way. So I think that's really, really important um, and uh, my impressions are, are also, of course, that it forces us to look at our preconceived notion of what family is and how we're fo forced to de define ourselves differently in this regard. And uh, even in some cases, find a form of connection elsewhere. And what I really liked about this book is the idea that you navigate well between your own personal narrative and the communication breakdowns that contribute to estrangement with your brother and also the family pressures that simultaneously arise, uh, you mentioned from your mother, that did to an extent put a burden on you with regards to this. And I really have to say, this is one of the few books that um, actually paints what a healthy reconciliation can look like. So uh, it can serve as an inspiration for a number of us, and uh, should we choose to walk that path. And um, I'll I found that it really gave us some practical tools to navigate effectively through estrangement. So those are my impressions after reading the book. I mean, I went through it during the holidays. It was a wonderful read, by the way. Well, I hope every reader feels as enthusiastic as you do. Um, <laughs> it's um, a very personal story. And I think it's important for a couple of reasons, as you outlined. But one is that we read quite a bit about family estrangement, but there's very little that addresses specifically sibling estrangement. And I did exactly what you said. I tried to weave my personal experiences 
along with other voices and the research that's out there that illuminates why this stuff happens and how it affects the individual. You know, and, and that's, that's the wonderful thing that I liked about your book is the idea that it, it, it flows nicely. You share and you open up in terms of your own experience and you bring us right back into the emotional feel of what that is. And you tie that into, as you said, with some of what uh, the, the, the survey respondents have said. So it really, uh, it really helps to, to, to bring the point home in terms of what you're conveying to us that is all very familiar to all of us that have gone through this. You know, Ali John, in all the books I've written, I try really hard to bring the reader along on my experience. And so the scenes are written just like that. It's really not written like a typical memoir where uh, I talk on and on. I create the scenes. And actually, when my mother and brother read the book, they both asked me, how did you remember all of this? Well, I took very copious notes after every encounter because I had the feeling I would be able to do something with this material. And throughout my writing career, I have tried to address and process through writing my very painful and traumatic experiences. And actually, uh, the marketer at Viking Penguin called me a family trauma writer. And I'd never been called that before, but the more I thought about it, I think it was rather accurate. You know, it's, it's, it's an important term, I think, with regards to that. And I think that, like you said, you, you, you paint a very visual picture. We were saying that just before we were doing today's video and how um, you're able to, to make it very vivid and paint it in such a way that it's, it's very detailed and such. So that is one of the strengths of the book that I really appreciated. And um, as you said, I think that in some ways you're highlighting a lot of things that are hidden when it comes to family trauma, right? People don't talk about it. People keep it largely hidden. And you're bringing it out to, to the surface, especially the, the issues with sibling estrangement. So um, I think that that's, that's, that's key, especially because we, we don't talk about this. We have the image of the perfect family in society, right? And it's always being pushed on us, but yet most of us, well, I, I would say it's, it's a good third of uh, the population doesn't get along with their siblings. So that's very important to consider in all this. Well, I think that gives me a great opportunity to talk a little bit about why I think this subject is so important. And one is the experience of shunning. There's probably nothing quite as painful as being shunned by a group or a family member. And actually there have been specific research on the experience of shunning. A guy named Kipling Williams, who's a professor of psychological sciences at Purdue, uh, did studies about ostracism. And basically what he has found is that the same areas of the brain light up when you're being physically injured or when you're being shunned or psychologically injured. And so that gives you a sense of how profoundly this hurts when it happens. The other thing I want to say is that the sibling relationship is extremely important and often overlooked. Um, and actually, in some studies, including the Harvard Medical School study, which is the longest study of well-being that's out there, they found that uh, siblings who lacked a close relationship before the age of 20 had a greater likelihood of suffering from depression in life. And a predictor of a well-being and a good relationship at 60 is when young people have a solid relationship in their 20s. Um, so this is a really important aspect of well-being. Siblings also can contribute to higher levels of self-esteem, better academic performances, um, becoming a better adjusted adult less loneliness, lower levels of depression, greater satisfaction in life. So all of that comes from that sibling relationship, which is the longest relationship that we probably have. Wow, that's, that's really a mouthful there. <laughs> I think that <laughs> there's, there's so much I'd like to add to that, but I think that in, 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 you know, just to, to keep it brief, of course, the, the idea that 
um, that, that it pours into other aspects of our lives. Like you say, I think the idea, it's not just the, the, the social shunning and such, it's the idea that it can actually start to affect physical health in the long run if we're not careful. And I think that that's really, really important with regards to that because it can have a, a detrimental effect to our well-being um, if if we uh, yeah, let this uh, yeah if we let this chew us up yeah. So. Which is why, throughout our conversations, I'm always an advocate, if possible, to reconcile. Of course, there are some relationships that are simply untenable and unworkable, and you have to protect yourself. But if there's a crack in the door, I think reconciling is probably the best thing you can do, even if it's a limited relationship. And I say that because mourning the living is so profoundly painful. Mm -hmm. And you had your ways in which to mourn uh, your brother. I, I, I recalled as I was reading the book, you had uh, different ways in which you were able to um, find uh, answers to your needs to connect. I recall correctly, you had mentioned uh, something about that. I, I, I actually did a volunteer experience because I had this terrible sense of loss because I didn't have, I only have one brother and I didn't have a relationship with him. And so I volunteered at the Cradle, which is an adoption agency. And I cuddled babies between a, a birth and placement. And uh, that was actually, that actually becomes part of my story because it forced me to reflect pretty extensively on attachment and detachment and estrangement because obviously adoption has some of those elements as well. And so that is woven into the book as well. And I like that part especially also. I like the idea that you, you mentioned that because uh, what's what's interesting is you're answering that need. You're answering it in your own way. And it's the way in which you write what it does to you. I mean, I, I really found that quite, uh, quite nourishing with regards to um, the ways in which we can be very creative about finding ways to fill that gap. And I think that that's especially important, you know, um, the idea that you didn't just sit with this and do nothing. You did something about this. You were proactive. You went ahead and did something that mattered to you to help this. Well, interestingly, everybody comes to the cradle with a very specific need. And that's part of the story as well. Everybody who was there was looking for a connection, whether it was a family type of connection or a surrogate sister. Um, and we found it there. It was a largely female experience and we were loving and nurturing babies, also a largely female experience. And uh, so we took care of each other because we were nurturers. I think the quality of nurturing becomes especially important. And I, I like that you bring this up because I know that um, this this is this hits a, a nerve. Uh, the videos we've been doing and such have been hitting a big nerve. I think with a number of people, and um, I think that that's. I even had a colleague at work approach me at one time and ask me like, what 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 should she do in that situation with her family member, you know, her sibling in that way. And I mean, uh, I gave her some advice about that, and uh, it turned out well, thankfully, you know, <laughs> you know. But it, I'm curious to know what's been your experience when you talk to others about sibling estrangement. I mean, well, <laughs> it's funny because if I say I'm doing a book on sibling estrangement, everybody kind of leans in <laughs> because everybody has a story and nobody wants to talk about it. And actually, that was the purpose of some of what I did. I surveyed over 120 people because I wanted to hear their stories. Now, I have to say that most of us are very reluctant to, to fill out a survey, to be, say something public about this experience because we feel so humiliated that we have not been able to sustain a relationship with a very important family member. And you really don't wanna talk about that publicly. On the other hand, of course, I'm helping you as we conduct these support groups, which have been very informative. And in those groups, people are somewhat willing to talk about this experience. But for the most part, you just don't see it out there. People do not want to go out of their way to join a support group and discuss this very painful experience. 
You're absolutely right. I think that that's, that's especially important. The notion that people are, uh, uh, you know, uh, hesitant to talk about it because there's that, that idea that it's almost not, not socially acceptable somehow to not get along with our siblings. And I, I'm, I'm glad that you, you spoke of the support group because I do think it's one of the few resources out there that's being offered online on Zoom um, that we can do, of course, to help to break the stigma of sibling estrangement. And we've had a good participation so far. And um, I, I think that what comes out the most in that is the idea that people appreciate the coming together, the idea of community, the idea of belonging, which is what you're talking about, especially in your book, the importance of belonging. And I want to add one comment to what you just say, said about the importance of what you're doing as far as this support group. Uh, you can go online and join these private chat rooms, and there's a lot of reinforcement of the negativity of the experience, and not a lot of guidance or a lot of insight offered as to how to move forward. And I think in a support group like yours, um, we have that opportunity to really step back. And of course I'm participating and I'm reconciled, which is a, its own unique role. Um, but I think, I think it really is an important group because it takes you to another level rather than just moaning and groaning about this very painful experience. Well, I appreciate that we're able to talk about this, Fern, because uh, I mean, we need to put, uh, we need to, of course, uh, have people, uh, uh, you know, know that that book is out there and that know that there's resources that we, we make available for people specifically with sibling estrangement. And uh, I'm, I'm glad as a psychotherapist to be able to offer that support group setting for people and such. So um, uh, since we're almost out of time, I just want to check with you uh, if you'd like to just uh, tell people uh, in, what, uh, in what format is the book available? So the book is traditionally published by Viking and Penguin, which means that it's available in any bookstore, uh, online, of course, and in audio books. And actually, I know there are a lot of audio listeners, so um, I'm happy to say that I've heard the snippets of the readers, and it's quite dramatic. Yeah. And can you just share with us some other books you may have written in case people... Yeah, so as a family trauma writer, <laughs> I have written uh, a book called Motherland, which is also a memoir. And that book is about my mother and I returning to her very small town in Germany 60 some years after she had fled. To, she was a 12 year old who was an unaccompanied minor in 1938. Her parents were murdered in the Holocaust, and she came from this really small town. And that meant that she and I had a very intimate experience when we returned to this town. Everyone remembered her. Everybody had a sense of what they had or had not done during this crucial moment in history. And Motherland, which is a memoir, captures in the same way that I've done in Brothers, Sisters, Strangers, these encounters that she and I had and how this experience transformed my relationship with my mother. So it's very much a mother-daughter story. Well, if people like your writing style as I did, you know, I think that people will largely appreciate this book also if it uh, speaks to them in that way, that they're curious to go further with you, of course. Um, and um, if there's one more thing I'd like to check before we end, uh, let's talk about this online event you have. You have uh, somebody that's uh, going to be interviewing you for the book. You've been able to get Dr. Ramani. Dr. Ramani. Uh, yes. So Dr. Ramani is a YouTube sensation and she talks all about toxic relationships and narcissism. And um, we requested that she would be the interviewer for the book launch, which will be on Thursday, April 8th next week. And she has agreed, and I can only imagine that it will be very interesting and entertaining. She's got quite an engaging style, and I hope I can match it. Absolutely. And if people need more information about that, they can go to your Facebook page, of course. Right. So if they want to register for that event, uh, I know I'm going to be there. So, <laughs> so I, I definitely want to be part of uh, the... Uh, be able to see that and see just, uh, of course, bringing the message out and such. So 
I really appreciate you being able to do this, Fern, um, to talk about the book. And, and this, is, uh, this has been a labor of love that you've done. This has been about bringing this message out. It's an easy read. Uh, it flows nicely. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a difficult subject, but we, we're very familiar with the subject and um, it will help people to move further with, than where they're at. So I do think it'll add to people's uh, overall experience uh, and such. So I really, really appreciate you being here. Well, thank you. And I want to just add one remarkable piece, which is that my brother, from whom I was estranged for decades, wrote the afterword and gave his perspective on what happened and why it happened. And uh, that's pretty interesting in itself. Anyway, Ali John, it's always wonderful to be with you. And I feel so fortunate to have a fan like you. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for being a part of this, Fern, and uh, for sharing these resources with us. And uh, yes, definitely, um, we'll, we'll continue uh, with our uh, other videos, of course, and uh, hopefully uh, our viewers will uh, be on for the ride with us. So thank you again for doing this. It's been wonderful, and uh, we'll talk again soon, Fern. Okay, thank you. All right, take care.